So, here's the installation video. And, um, you know, one thing is, I'd like to reflect on the um, elementary OS review I did while I'm doing this, because, you know, it's an installation video. I've got to talk about something. Um, you know, I think they did a lot of stuff quite well with elementary OS, like they made it gel really nicely, like in most Linux distributions. You never find, well, I mean, you can, but often you don't find that all the applications look the same, and they all gel well together, like, um, I don't know, certainly in Ubuntu, it's nice, but if you install, well, mind you, I didn't install anything else in elementary OS, but... It's nice, but even some of the applications that come installed with it don't um, all look the same. Okay, here we go. Install. You can try, and then there's an install icon on the desktop if you want to. Um, you'd normally want to tick this option. Uh, come on. I'm patient today. Right, so I'm reinstalling this over an earlier attempt. Um, just because I can, but if it was an empty disk, it would still be this option that you'd pick. Um, you can do these two as well, if you want to, if you don't have to. Um, and this is really if you're an advanced user, but I'm not going to show you that, because if you were going to pick that option, you'd probably already know how it worked. So, install now. Blah, 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 blah. That looks fine to me. I mean, if you're doing automatic installation, it's fine, so you pick your time zone. That's right for me. Yeah, that's fine. I'm not going to test the keyboard. My name. English. Choose a password. Choose my default. Fairly rubbish password for virtual machines. Yeah, you can encrypt your home folder as well. And um, I guess that can be helpful. I don't use it, but if you wanted to, I think you have to put key or password in as the system boots up or something like that, but it's quite easy. So, continue. And there we go. Um, I thought there was a slideshow here, but there isn't. There normally is. Well, this is just like the standard Ubuntu installer. So if you've installed Ubuntu or Linux Mint or something else. I don't know what that uses the standard installer, it would work the same way. So, um, what was I talking about? Yeah, so elementary OS it has achieved something most, ha most distributions haven't, where everything gels together really nicely. But I think it's also lost something by doing that. Um, it doesn't feel to me like it has as much character as some of the other distributions, and I think that's probably because largely what they've done <coughs> is um, mimic Mac OS X. And I'm not saying they're copying it, but they're trying to make something which would appear like not radically different to somebody who's used OS X or somebody who likes OS X. And they've done that, and yeah, parts of it look similar. Parts of it look quite different, but um, in doing that, they've lost the appeal for me because it, um, it doesn't have that sort of, you know, customizability feel that most Linux distributions have. Like, well, I don't know, I'm sure you can see from my desktop here that this is Linux Mint Cinnamon. I've put this on. This is different. I've changed the theme, and the theme is actually... I think it's two macOS-like themes that are sort of combined together, like this is a Snow Leopard theme, I think. Something like that. And, um, yeah, I quite like just, like, getting a Linux distribution and then tweaking it as much as I want to, that's just my thing. And if I had elementary OS, um, you can't change the theme at all. I mean, in OS X, in system preferences, they have an option like, um, where you can change the, well, the main colour, you know, it's normally blue, you can change it to grey there. 
that's about all you can do, I think. But um, in elementary hours, you don't even have that, which is a bit... Well, it seems a bit ridiculous to me, to be honest. But I have not used elementary OS before. I might have missed something. Like, I wasn't super thorough, as you can tell, when I was going through the video. Going through all the stuff in the video, I was just sort of looking at things that interested me, saying what my first impressions were. So, in all, possi in all probability, I've missed it. And it is there. Um, but I don't know. What I am glad about, though, is um, when I first used it in the virtual machine, I started it and I was like, oh no, this is GNOME 3, isn't it? Because um, the bar at the top looks almost the same. And fortunately, it isn't. I really, really, really don't like GNOME 3 very much. I don't know why. I mean, loads of people hate it. I don't hate it. I just don't like it. Um, yeah, so what they've sort of done is they have, like, the GNOME 3 bar-ish at the top. But it's, it's, um, it's not based on GNOME 3, it used to be. It's now called... Uh, what's it called? I don't know. It's in the text review. Um, but it's a fork of GNOME shell, which is probably why it has the resemblance. But it doesn't have the horrible... well in my opinion, horrible app draw thing. I'm not trying to start a flame wall, this is just my opinion. Um, yeah. But yeah, what I really miss in this is the customization, because when I first started this, I was thinking, oh, you know, I might not like it as much as Mint, but maybe I could, well, in the future, I might think about using this as a, like, um, my actual system to replace all of this, if I wanted to. Um, oh, right, I'll just restart, I'll keep talking. Hopefully I'm not too bored of this by now. Um, and, yeah, I just, I don't like it as much as I thought I would, which is a shame. Okay, press enter. Yeah, it worked this time. Didn't work the other time I tried it. I must have done something stupid. Um, yeah, like, um, take this, all of this stuff. None of these are standard. Well, that's standard. But, like, none of the rest of this stuff is standard. I've added all of that. Yeah, so this is what I'm talking about at the top here that looks a bit like GNOME 3. Um, but when you open the Applications menu, well, if you've used GNOME 3, you know that you can see that it looks completely different. Anyways, that's the end of this review. I will be doing one on Solaris soon. And probably, I don't know, one on OpenBSD, but I have some other stuff coming up too.